CQ, CQ Poda, CQ Parks on the air from Kilo Charlie 5 Hotel Whiskey Bravo. Today we're doing FT8 with the brand new DR891 cables from DigiRig. I'll put a link in the description below. It basically makes your Yezu FT891 a plug and play radio for digital modes. I wanted to show you this today, so let's go. Today's video is sponsored by Ham Radio Prep. Save a 20% discount on everything that they offer, all courses, with the coupon code of Jason20. If you want to learn how to ham radio, if you want to learn how to HF, Ham Radio Prep is an excellent resource for that. Thank them. If you contact them, thank them for sponsoring this channel. All right, while I'm working this right here, I'm able to record a video and work uh, FT8 at the same time. <laughs> I just work one QSO at a time, and then it pops up. And it has me acknowledge the uh, QSO into the logbook, and then I move on uh, with the enable transmit button. I'm calling back to this guy right now, Kilo 7 Papa Delta Whiskey, and I'm sending him Roger, 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 but he's stopped replying to me. So that is how it is. So you got to go through some settings in the FT891 to get it set for digital modes. But I wanted to show you this setup. This is the, the bag uh, from the Tech Prepper. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot buy these bags anymore. I'm always on the lookout for other bags that will hold radios in Armalock cages. This is the TPA891 cage from Armalock. It protect, you can see how far it comes off of the radio right here. These guys were in the Huntsville Hamfest uh, just a short time ago at the time of this recording. But I've had that cage for about a year. I took this entire setup before I put the DigiRig cables on it. I took this entire setup to Utah, Bryce Canyon, Zion, Yellowstone National Park, several other places, did some a lot of activations with this. But this is your DigiRig 891, uh, DR891 setup here. It's the radio interface cable and the USB-B cable that go into the back. Both of these cables have built-in ferrite beads right there and again right here. So both of them have double ferrite beads built into the cable. Very cool setup from Dennis there. And then they go into the top of that digi rig that you see right there. But they go into the uh, to the back of the digi rig, and then out of the front of the digi rig is a single USB C cable. So the USB C comes out of here and it goes into your computer however you want to interface. You want to interface USB C to USB C, that's fine. This is my FC G1 Tough Pad from Panasonic. It has a single USB A port on the side, so I'm not. I'm going C to A today. So now anytime I want to operate a digital mode from this radio, all I have to do is plug in a single USB cable and we're done. Windows. Now I have found there's several videos on YouTube with this new DR891 cable system. There's a couple of guys doing WinLink with it. There's a couple of guys using a Mac computer at KADMRD. He uses a Mac computer. Gaston, the tech prepper, he's doing this with WinLink and JS8 Call. I have yet to see anyone use this new system with a Windows box to do FT8 for POTA. So I wanted to show you that today. There are several settings in the radio you have to set. You have to go into like, I don't know, eight or 10 or maybe 12 different menus. So I'm gonna show you that here in a second. And then when I set it up the first time, WSJTX was acting weird. It was acting like I had, had, had the bandwidth set to a narrow bandwidth instead of for three um, kilohertz wide. It was acting like it wasn't it wasn't decoding signals and it was acting like a couple things i i closed wsjtx and restarted it and it fixed my problem and i've had to do that a couple of times in the past not a big deal just sometimes if you change some settings that's the thing but that's just kind of the way it is so if you're having trouble with wsjtx and you know you've got all your settings correct close the program restart it it is a windows box after all okay i'm going to go over some of the settings with you that i changed in the ft891 in order to make it ready to do digital modes. Now, these settings can kind of vary, and you have to do a couple of things in Windows also. And quite frankly, you know, I'm pretty well versed in Windows, and I got I got it to work, and it was no problem, but I emailed Dennis, and then I ended up calling him on the phone, Dennis, the owner of DigiRig, and he's like, well, there's actually a better way to do that. And we walked through some settings on the sound card, and we got it to work a little bit better. So what I did worked, but what he did worked better. So... Basically, you have to go in, if you click on your, once you have the DigiRig plugged into USB, go down to the bottom right corner of your SysTray, the bottom right corner of your window in Windows, right click on your sound speaker and choose Sounds. Then from there, you have a recording and a, a playback tab. And on each of those tabs, you might have multiple options in there, but you need to go down and find the one for the DigiRig. Mine was listed as Speaker 
and microphone USB audio codec. So what you can do is you can right or double click on those and change some settings in there. I renamed mine to DigiRig for both the playback and the um, recording device. The recording device is obviously the microphone. The playback is the speakers. But if you name both of them to DigiRig and make sure they're not set to the default speaker and microphone. That was something that, did, uh, that Dennis told me that was um, important to do. Do not let them be become the default because Windows will, will mess with you because Windows is dumb. Find your ambient, find your default speaker and microphone from Windows, right click on it, set to default, make sure it's not the DigiRig. And then from there, you can go into the DigiRig, you can uncheck a box that says AGC, that's actually in Windows. You can set the audio levels and you can rename them to what you want to. So that was a that was an extra, I had it working before I did all that, but that was an extra step that helped me along as well. So there's a few menus in the FT891 that we have to set in order to do digital modes correctly, or at least correctly with the DigiRig device. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to hold long press the F menu on the bottom of the radio, bottom left corner of the radio, and that'll take you into the deep menu for the FT891. In the deep menu, we, you want to start at menu 5-06, okay? And you want to set that for 38,400, which is the setting that we will match in the WSJTX software. The CAT TOT menu 507 is 100 milliseconds, and the CAT RTS is disabled, so which is uh, menu 5-08. Those you want to set first off. And then you scroll down by using this wheel on the bottom left, this uh, control knob on the bottom left corner of the radio, and you're gonna find menu 8-01, and it's for data mode. There's several options in there, and the setting that I'm using is others. And then the next three for PSK tone, other DSP, and other shift are all set to 1500 hertz. I found that on another video somewhere. I set that, and it seemed to work, so I just kind of kept going with it. 805 data cut off, data L cut frequency is off. Data L cut slope. This is 18 dB slash OCT. That's what it was by default. So you can see the screen kind of flashing there anyway. It was it was that by default, so I just left that. Data high cut frequency is also off so that it doesn't cut off the frequency at the top or the bottom of the WSJTX band. And then the high cut slope is also by default. So you can see that there. And then we want to, in menu 809, data in select is rear because we're using that rear USB B port in the back of the 891. This next menu is 810, which is data PTT select, and DAKY is what you want. Mine was there by default, so I didn't change anything. That's just kind of where it was. And then data out level is 50. Again, that was mine by default. I did not change that. And then data VFO should be set to USB. I think mine was something else. Mine was... Uh, LSB, but this sets your data BFO to upper sideband because all digital modes on all bands are done on upper sideband, digital U or whatever your radio might call it, but that puts it on upper sideband. Then we're going to scroll down here to menu 1107, which is right here, which is uh, BPO, or B, I'm sorry, BFO, and that should be set to auto. And then that's pretty much it for that deep menu right there. If you long press the band button here on the top, it takes you to the mode. So you're gonna to wanna to set that from SSB to data mode or from CW to, you wanna set it to data mode wherever you were beforehand. So you're gonna to wanna to set that. And then on the width, which you can, I've got my width set right there. That is 500 by default, or it was before I changed it. Okay, and to get into that menu, you just go into function, short press the function menu, go into function one, and you've got the width right there. You can choose which option is there turning the knob press the knob change the width right there i set it on my quick menu down here just because i wanted to and the, the very last option is actually back in the deep menu again let's get out of there let's go back into the deep menu and we're going to scroll down to option 1603 which is the hf power now you can see right there on the screen hf ssb power is 100 hf am power is 25 and HF power I have set to 30. And the reason I have it set to 30 is because this potable, uh, potable antenna, HF power is the data or the digital power for, for the data mode. When we changed it, 
in the band selection, long press the band, change it to data. This is the HF power that's used for that. Yezu's got different power settings for sideband, AM, and data. Some people don't like that. I think it kind of makes sense because you don't know what you may not always want to do 100 watts or 5 watts on everything. But whatever, whether you like that or not, that's where you change that. This Pota Abul antenna maxes at 35 watts for digital modes. I ran it at 35 watts for about a half hour and it got hot, so the SWR came up. So I changed it down to 30 watts and it seemed to work just fine. I was getting plenty of stations. I was hearing plenty of stations. I was getting responses from plenty of stations with 30 watts. It worked just great. But that's pretty much all you have to set as far as the radio menus go. And once you have all that, it should automatically connect up. I've had the DigiRig installed on this Panasonic uh, FC G1 Tough Pad for a long time. But the first time I ever installed it, Windows read it, it installed the drivers, I had no problems. If you don't experience that si same type of plug and play feature, you can go to DigiRig's website and download the drivers for, uh, for Windows 10, Windows 11, whatever you're using. So, but that was easy, so as soon as you as soon as I plugged in this DigiRig, it came up with the proper drivers on the proper COM ports. You just have to go into the device manager of Windows, look and see what the COM ports are, and make sure you set those accordingly. For WSJTX, there's certain settings. I actually chose in the in the menus of WSJTX, there is a, a drop down when you choose radio. So I just I just created a new profile. I called it DigiRig. And in the drop down for the radio, I chose Yezu FT891. It kind of seemed to me like it was a little bit weird to have the Yezu FT891 in a menu for WSJTX because the 891 does not have a built-in sound card. But I guess Joe Taylor was smart enough to put all of the radios in his drop-down because things such as the DigiRig and SignalLink and many other sound card devices have existed for a long time. So I chose FT891 at my drop-down menu. And then I chose 38,400 for the baud rate, which we set in the radio a minute ago. And then pretty much everything else was by default, but I did have to set my COM port. On my computer, it was COM6, which uh, the, the DigiRig installs two COM ports, a sound in and a sound out, that's normal. So you choose the sound in on the first option for WSJTX. And then, uh, and then everything else was pretty much by default, but you do have to go over to the audio tab and choose the DigiRig for both your microphone and your speakers. If you've renamed it, it should just be DigiRig. If you haven't renamed it, then it might be, it's probably called USB audio codec or something similar in that menu. So that was basically all I did. Now, every time I have to plug this up, I take one USB A to C cable, I plug it into the DigiRig, I plug it into my tough pad, and I'm done. If I wanted to use my uh, Evolve Maestro laptop, it would be the same thing, USB C to USB A, or my Windows laptop, USB C to USB A. I could do on the Windows laptop, I could do USB C to USB C if I wanted to, and that's uh, that's up to you depending on what connection you're using. So that's pretty much it. I made, I think I made about eight or nine contacts, so I didn't finish my POTA activation. Because, because I left my charging cable. Now, gr the great thing about that tough pad is that it charges via 12 volt. It has a 12 volt charge. It has a 12 volt charger that you can buy in addition to it. That's got a cigarette lighter plug. Of course, I just cut it off and put power poles on it. So I can charge it from my battery box, but I left that charger at home. I didn't think it was gonna take me so long to get everything set up and configured and blah, blah, blah. Some of this I did yesterday, but I wanted to make sure I had all my ducks in the row and everything was working. So I didn't get enough time to actually activate the park, but that's okay. That just means I can do some sideband now. I've got my Explorer backpack with me. It's got all my stuff in it. Really enjoying this potable, potable antenna from the guys in um, Bayside, Texas. They make that, I'll put a link in the description below for that. And that's actually like the second time ever I've used my 32 foot spider beams mast. I don't use that one very much, but I'm like, you know, I'm gonna be running lower power than normal, lower power than what I am used to running. So I wanted the antenna up higher and it fits in this spot from there. I could, I could hang the feed point up a little bit higher. Typically I'll hang the feed point down lower, but I rose, raised the feed point up up to the top of that 32 foot mast and it's working beautifully. I was hearing stations all over the USA, hearing some Canadian stations, one or two Cuban stations and uh, worked some POTA FT8 30 watts from the DR891 connected to the Yezu FT891 from Parks on the Air today. Thanks for watching today guys. Put a comment below if you have any questions about this. Links for everything I talked about will be in the description below and we'll catch you next time.